When they done with you, they done with you. Then they collect the money off the insurance policy that they put on you, and then they, they memorialize you, and then they sell your records forever, just like Honeycomb been doing with Biggie. Honeycomb been eating off Biggie forever. Honeycomb home has been eating off Biggie longer than Biggie was fucking alive, my nigga. Like, is anybody, like, no, I don't think anybody really gets that part. Biggie wasn't even 30 when he died. He was, what, 25? Biggie been dead. Damn near 30 years. Yeah, because Tupac went first in 95 and Biggie went early 96. So, yeah, it's been, it's been, well, we're going into 2023, yeah. It's been 25 years. Honeycomb has been eating off of Biggie for as long as he was alive. <laughs> like, how the fuck do you get that lucky? You put a rapper on, he blows up, becomes larger than life, all you gotta do is facilitate him for six years. Next thing you know, he's dead, and you got a bag for the next 25 years? Wow. That nigga been making money for every year that man lived. Do I think little Kim's a clone? I don't think she's a clone, but I think she has definitely been heavily affected by this game. I mean, the truth is, there's a lot of people that don't look the same right now. There's a lot of people that don't look, you know, like they all there. But as long as you dress them up and you put them in clothes, you know. I mean, ain't nobody ever going to talk about it. Just like ain't nobody talking about the simple fact that the godfather of music Mr. Clarence Avon himself, who made it possible for all of these niggas to be businessmen in the music industry. His wife was shot in the back and left for dead and died. His 70 some year old wife was shot in the back at their house. You gotta understand something. The Avon family ain't your typical black family. I mean, their daughter worked for the Obama administration. Clarence Avon talked about it in the documentary that they did, The Godfather, talking about him. How does your wife get murdered when you live in Bel Air and shit? Armed guards at the gate of your gated community Cameras everywhere. I know you got private security at the house. You are not typical Negroes. How does some random nigga just walk up to Clarence A. By house and shoot his wife in the back? They called him the next day and he was laughing and joking about how he killed that elderly woman. He killed Nana. Yeah, I'm glad I'll be sure it came out of his, his coma. I, I wonder why he was in it. Like, people think I'm, like, making this up. That nigga Diddy dancing around Hollywood like he the new godfather of the music game. Clarence Abe, I, I can't imagine how some random person just runs up and kills and kills that man's wife. See, when you pay into that game, you get a bill and it come due. It come due. Clarence Avon did a lot of moving around in his day and age. He came up under the Jewish mafia. People don't think there's a Jewish mafia, but there is. And a lot of it between the Jews and the Italians, especially in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, were ran by Jews and Italians, the, the music industry, period. Clarence Avon was trained by 
the oldest of the old. He came into the game in the 1940s. And it been there all that time. And ain't nobody say nothing about his wife's death. I just happened to read about it. A friend of mine I was on the phone with earlier told me. And it, it, it threw me off because I still wasn't online. I wasn't paying attention to nothing online. I wasn't trying to do nothing. I didn't want to see nothing. Like, you know, Kanye ain't all the way crazy. You don't become a billionaire by accident. People got right. Am I anti-Semitic? Absolutely not. Some of my closest and dearest friends have been Jews and it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I'd never seen a recording contract that didn't have a Jewish name on it or negotiated by a Jewish lawyer. There are very few black attorneys, for every black attorney, for every great black attorney that there is in the music industry, there's 20 Jewish ones. I know because I hired a Jewish lawyer to get me out of my major contract so that I could get away from the hell and get away from the foolishness before I got caught the fuck up. People wanna know why I didn't continue on climbing up to the upper echelon and clawing my way like everybody else did because I knew what was gonna be there and I ain't trying to be a witness to half of the shit that they doing anyhow. These motherfuckers are sick. I told myself back in 2007, I was going to carve my own way. Whatever it is that I need to achieve or that I want to achieve, I'll get there. I'll, I'll take the scenic route. I don't need the shortcut. Because sometimes the shortcut just gets you cut short. Ass take off. Ain't that funny how that play on words work? The shortcut. Just gets you cut short. 